fine so when you talk about this course we have a two options one is you can attend live classes based on your time availability you can choose whether you want to attend live classes or you want to go with a recorded class videos if somebody is planning for recording videos recorded class videos so if you have a EBS knowledge or experience then you can go with the recorded videos otherwise better you can attend live classes even if you subscribe the recorded class videos you can attend live classes even if you attend uh, live classes you can get previous batch recorded videos and you can attend current running batch and you can get current batch videos also or else you can subscribe the recorded videos and you can go through those videos if it is not possible for you to attend the current batch live classes you can attend upcoming batches okay once you subscribe this course you are allowed up to one year to attend any batch okay these are the two options we have based on your flexibility you can choose so this is the agenda we have for today's session we'll talk about what is the meaning of fusion applications and uh, cloud computing what's the difference between on premise and cloud and what are the different options available for the customers when they are going to opt fusion cloud applications and uh, very few uh, features i just addressed in the this ppt to understand what are new uh, in the fusion applications by like comparing with ebs then finally we'll go through the course curriculum what exactly we are going to cover as a part of this training the very first point is what does it mean by fusion applications so we know very well oracle started as a database company okay they started with the database then they have developed the very first application in general accounting which is general ledger application now after general accounting they developed many applications and there are few prior versions also but uh, very much uh, known versions these are ebs 11i version after ebs 11i they did some announcements they introduced some new applications and they released 12 version ebs release 12 which we call after release 12 totally they released fusion cloud applications or say fusion applications what exactly fusion application means when you talk about what is the difference between 11a and r12 we know very well it's all about few announcements they did and they introduced some new applications that's how they upgraded from they moved from 11a to r12 there are many sub versions but we don't need to talk about now but when it comes to fusion applications or fusion cloud applications there is a big change in technology and everything in the applications technology they change a lot let's try to understand what exactly the fusion applications means it could be cloud or fusion applications so when you talk about different erp products in the market so we have a jd adwords in the market as erp product and we have a people soft cbel oracle business suite they are the erp products not only these there are many other erp products in the market along with the erp products we have a different enterprise applications also like hyperion primavera when you look at jd adwords there are many solutions are available from jd adwords say from many erp products these solutions are available the important point is from which erp which solution is famous that's really important now if you look at jd adwords jd adwords is offering scm finance projects asset life cycle and manufacturing related application solutions they are providing the same way when you look at people soft they have scm solution hcm solution finance and uh, supplier relationship management in the same way cbel cbel is offering the solution like crm and erm and prm different uh, products they are offering or which support specific business process or sub process related solutions they are offering as we know oracle e business suite is offering scm and crm finance projects etc and hyperion when you talk about hyperion so hyperion is providing the hfm solution and hfr and planning and budgeting prima mira project portfolio management these are the different erp products and enterprise applications which you can find in the market but if you look at those products say jd adwords is 
famous for supply chain management. PeopleSoft is very famous in the market for HCM, Human Capital Management. And Siebel is very famous for CRM solution. And Oracle Business Suite, the best piece from EBSC is financials. And Hyperion is very good for all these areas, but especially for reporting. So this all, which is at all will to support the reporting only. Primary, we are very famous for project portfolio management, PPM. So these are the different ERP products are specialized in the different areas. There's no one ERP which can provide better solution for the different areas. Say if one client wants to choose Oracle Business Suite for CRM, it's not good when we compare with Siebel. And if any client is looking for HRMS solution from eBusiness Suite, it's not HRMS EBS solution is not good when you compare with PeopleSoft HCM solution. So if somebody is going to opt some reporting solution from Oracle eBusiness Suite, okay, so it's a OBIE or anything else that is not good enough if you compare with Hyperion financial reporting. So if some client is looking for project solution from Oracle Business Suite, if you compare that project scheduling, etc., that is not great if you compare with Primavera. Primavera is really good for project portfolio management, not the sol uh, whatever the solution is available as a part of Oracle Business Suite. So this is how we have a different ERP products where those are specialized in the different areas, but no ERP available in the market which can deliver all the areas of best solutions as per the client need. Let's take simple case here. Say we have one client, the client requirement is they want to implement supply chain management and uh, say human capital management, so customer relationship management and financial management. These are the four areas they want to implement for their business. So now which ERP is the right ERP for them? If you look at these ERPs, so if they want to go with SCM, yes, they have to take the solution from JD AdWords for their SCM solution. They have to take the product from PeopleSoft for CRM. They have to take from Siebel for finance. They have to take the solution from Oracle eBusiness Suite. So if they take different solution from the different products, they have to take the license from these four vendors. And again, the challenging task is integrations, the ongoing process. There will be many more challenges. So now the big question is which ERP is right ERP for them. There's no one ERP which will fit as best as per their requirement. So that is the reason what Oracle did is Oracle acquired almost all ERP products which are available in the market. And not only ERP products, they take another enterprise applications also they acquired and they acquired many technologies. Now what Oracle did is the JD AdWords they acquired people have they acquired Siebel they acquired Oracle Business Suite is their own product and Primavera they acquired Hyperion they acquired the same way there are many other tools or ERP products or many technologies okay those could be reporting tools or any other tools they acquired so after acquiring what they did is from those products which is the best piece which is the best solution that they taken okay that means from JD AdWords they take an SAP solution not only just SM they take in combination from other applications also just for our discussion discussion I'm addressing that but from people's after they take HCM solution human capital management which is equal to our EBS HRMS from people Siebel they take in CRM solution because CRM is very sound from the Siebel and from Oracle is a suite they take in finance solution from Primavera they take in project portfolio management and uh, which is in EBS we have projects. The project solution now they take it from Primavera. So project scheduling and uh, some part of solution they taken from the EBS only and a few other areas they taken from other ERP products which they acquired and from PeopleSoft and other areas they taken and the high period. Okay, it's a reporting, the planning and budgeting and reporting solutions they taken from high period. All these products are acquired so anyway, EBS Oracle Business Suite is their own product. I just addressed a few only here. There are many. Okay. So from the different products, they take in the best solutions by taking the best solution from the different products for different areas. They built application called as Oracle Fusion Applications. 
so that's a meaning of fusion applications it's not a single product it's a legacy of different products and solutions so this is what we have to understand how the fusion applications they build but when you start say your client is going to use hcm scm finance and projects when your client is going to use these four areas of oracle fusion applications you don't see any legacy name when you are going to use finance fusion finance applications client is not going to see any names as this is from oracle evil suite no or a client will see as fusion finance when your client will use hcm human capital management they will see as a oracle fusion hcm only they don't see it as a people soft hcm which is a legacy that is a source product legacy product when your client will use crm solution they don't see it as a cbel they see it as a fusion crm only that's how they everything they taken into one suit and they released as a fusion applications okay so that's the meaning of fusion any questions on this point please okay from the different erp products and different enterprise products taken the best areas and they built application called as fusion applications we talk about our finance finance they take it from oracle is a sweet only but they did small changes that any we are going to see that yeah please like lakshman this is shiva here <clears throat> i have a question so when you say cbel was used to build the crm solutions for fusion no, uh, is okay. it the one once again not to build okay we are uh, they are not building the crm solution the fusion they taken as it is the c crm solution they taken it to fusion that's it Okay, so the built to see uh, used to see a uh, simple feature to build uh, this uh, fusion CRM. That's what you meant, right? No, no, no. That's what I am saying. They are not building. They are using as this. The simple CRM they are using in fusion as a fusion CRM. That's it. The legacy from where they take the solution from that is simple. Okay, so they they are, they are not building. They have it. developed. Again, they are not rebuilding. Uh, they are not developing anything. They are not changing. whatever the solution is available as a part of cbel that oracle acquired oracle taken that oracle acquired that cbel and the crm solution we have as a part of oracle fusion applications that's it okay so then from only from atwell they had uh, rebuilt everything because the technology and everything changed right for compared to ebs atwell see they have ebs one second ebs is their own product right ebs mm -hmm. also we have crm right that we don't find in the fusion in fusion what are the crm you find that is from cbel no 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 my question is the, when it comes to fusion hmm. it is completely different technology when it comes to oracle e business suite uh when the, the user interface and the middleware everything is different for uh, compared to in well and fusion they introduce the middleware we'll discuss what is the middleware and where it will come into the picture and all Yeah, user interface yes they changed in ebs okay in ebs we use mostly forms right rarely web pages and but in the many products what in these many products they use web pages but finally oracle what they did is they made all our web pages okay so they just use the existing user interfaces of cbel into fusion yes exactly the function wherever some changes required those they changed and they converted to user interface as a web pages for all the applications all the products okay is this what is called a sales cloud cbel crm uh, and infusion sales sales is one of the part in the cbel uh, crm okay yeah, thanks many within that okay so they integrated all these products sorry did they integrate all these yes 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 in build integration however our ebs has integration finance integration with the cm applications finance and cm integration with hrms and with projects however we have in build integrations the same we have in the fusion across all these products okay so all the table structures will change now correct all the structures means when i talk about finance since they are using ebs finance no changes in that Okay, when integrated with the CBL PeopleSoft, it will change. 
as per that product uh, the tables you could see like oh, okay yeah any other question Thank here please right no questions so that's all about meaning of fusion operations now let's talk about cloud computing what does it mean by cloud computing here i have a simple slide to understand about how the cloud computing will work so when you talk about physical servers okay so in case of ebs implementation the client get server infrastructure will install the db will install the applications within the physical server but in cloud computing what happens is the cloud computing company in our case oracle now oracle is one of the cloud cloud vendor in the market because the cloud uh, the cloud technology also they acquired okay the cloud however they acquired this other er products in the same way cloud technology also they acquired from other vendors so now oracle also one of the big cloud computing company like amazon so now what oracle do is so by using sorry using the physical servers that means big machines by using the concept called as virtualization they can create virtual servers okay with one physical server they can create mul multiple virtual servers is the same example server 1 server 2 server 3 server up to 12 servers so by using one physical server with virtualization oracle can create virtual servers okay this happens in cloud computing after creating the virtual servers when i talk about physical server physical server we can place in some physical location after creating the virtual servers with the help of physical servers where they locate these virtual servers the virtual servers would be available internet as a source okay by using the physical server what are the virtual servers they are creating those they'll keep available internet as a source okay fine so when you look at the architecture of virtual server same as physical server virtual infrastructure operating system and application okay however we can install we can uh, have a operating system in the physical server in the same way we can have a virtual operating system with this virtual servers and with the help of that operating system we can install the applications also within that virtual server so now the same the physical server we have with the help of physical server what are the virtual servers or are creating is all the virtual servers they'll keep as internet as a source they'll keep those servers to be available through internet so here what happens is let's say the simple example or are created one virtual server for their client client a they created one virtual server now so oracle has data centers in usa india and australia so in cloud computing what they do is the virtual server whatever they are creating the virtual servers they'll keep available to nearest client data client locations say client is working from india so virtual server whatever they are creating that they'll keep available in the near data centers for the client so for india client nearest data center is india if no india which is other nearest to the india that's how they'll find and they'll place that virtual server in that data center if client is working going to work from australia also what they'll do is the same virtual server okay the synchronization they'll keep in australia data center if client is going to access that virtual server from us also the same they'll keep available within the us data center so that's how that replica of that virtual servers they'll keep available in the different data center so that if the user is trying to connect to that server i mean that virtual server automatically the india user access would be routed to india data center virtual server only if australia user is trying to connect url would be same for all the all the users you will get an instance the instance url will remain same but when user is trying to connect in the cloud computing 
they will identify the user is trying to connect from which physical location and which is the very nearest data center for them based on that uh, user request will be routed to the nearest data center because of that reason the user accessibility will become easy and the server response also will be easy or else if you have is a server in us and you are sitting in india if you are trying to access that server there will be some traffic right as a user will submit one request and many other users also will submit a network and the traffic would be there and the server has to respond it may take some time to respond and uh, produce results but if you are a user you are working from india and uh, the server also available within india the time whatever the whatever the request will be submitting and the server would be responding time you can reduce and the user experience would be rich so this is the actual technique the cloud computing companies follows instead of maintaining the product within the physical servers so if you, if you need access to financials and scm what what they will do is they'll create one virtual server they'll install the products in the virtual server they'll give the access to the virtual servers whenever you try to connect to that product when you as a user or as a consultant when you are trying to connect they'll route our request to nearest data center whatever the virtual server they created they put keep in the synchronization with their different respective data center so that our experience would be very rich compared to on premise process okay so this sort of uh, technique they follow in case of cloud computing wherever they have data centers whatever the virtual server they are creating for us they'll keep that virtual server available in the nearest data center and between this data center virtual servers and whatever oracle created they will have full synchronization so whatever you do here that will sync with this whatever data is available here that will sync with all the data centers virtual servers so that user will have a very fast access and user experience would be very rich and uh, they'll take care of everything so this is a basically cloud in case of cloud this is how it works in case of on premise our client has to maintain the server installation and dba team etc everything should be taken care by client only in case of cloud computing so we don't need any dba we don't need any technical team to manage the server so just we have to take the subscription once you take the subscription they'll create one virtual server they'll keep available in our nearest data center so that we can start using you can configure you can implement then business users will start using and client will be paying to oracle based on the subscription based on the modules which they are subscribing and then based on the number of users oracle will be charging the client so this is a simple technique they follow in case of cloud computing so servers are not going to be placed in specific location servers are not going to be placed in the physical locations so all they will just create virtual servers they will keep available in the internet as a source and since the virtual servers will be available to the users in their nearest data centers so whenever they try to connect immediately they can connect and uh, whenever they perform some activities or any when they submit the request they can see immediate response there won't be any delay or uh, it won't take time to interact with the server for any sort of communications from user side so this is a point we have to understand when we talk about cloud computing how how cloud computing would help us for the business users when they are working on the application so this is what the logic we have to understand any questions based on this please talk about cloud computing the, all the applications they converted into uh, web based application so that you can connect from any internet connected device it could be laptop or tablet or smartphone okay from any device you can connect to application okay what are the instance i'll be sharing will be using that also you can connect from your mobile phone fine here i'm taking the simple uh, example so we have a three clients one client required access to only storage space 
the other client required access to application the third client required application access and they need flexibility of doing the customizations so they want to implement financial applications okay they want to implement financial applications for client two they need access to financial applications from oracle so that they can implement and they can use for other client wants to implement financial applications as per their business process they want to customize specific application or certain functionality they want to build and they want to change the current process whatever it may be the standard application process they want to change so the other client they don't need any applications access they need only storage space one client requires storage space one client required applications access other client required application access along with the customization flexibility if this is a business requirement from the three different clients how oracle is going to help those three clients we'll see now so the first client requirement is storage space if any client is looking for storage space they can subscribe ias option ias means infrastructure as a service here they don't get any applications only storage space so you have some data with you you want to uh, store the data in the specific drive in your system yes you can do that instead of using your physical system laptop or desktop what you can do is you can buy the storage space maybe from amazon or from some other cloud vendors and you can store the data or you can install the software and you can place the files within the storage space the same way any cloud computing company provide ias service ias means infrastructure as a service here we don't get any application from the cloud vendor they will provide the space you can use however you require you want to install some applications that can be oracle applications or any third party applications or you don't want to install any applications you want to maintain some files or something else okay just we get the storage space if any company is looking for only storage space they can take the subscription called as ias infrastructure as a service and the second client requirement is application access let's take simple example we have one client who is looking for financial scm and hcm subscription from oracle in that case yes they can take and if they go with option called as saas saas means software as a service so oracle will provide saas subscription if any client is going to get saas subscription that means application access so we are going to subscribe finance scm and hcm human capital management so if you get access to saas model you can do the implementation and you can start using the product but if you want to do any customizations we cannot do any customizations in case of saas okay software as a service as is we can use whatever the software oracle is providing for finance scm and hcm so if you want to do some functionality related customization no in case of saas you cannot do any functionality related customization you cannot create new functionality or you cannot modify existing functionality the standard application whatever oracle provides you have to use as is but in case of saas you can do the third party integrations and if you want to develop new reports yes you can develop reports in the sense it's all about what data we have to fetch how to fetch with what logic we have to fetch it is not going to impact the application functionality so report customizations are not treated as a actual customizations to the product so if your client is going to use saas subscription from oracle they'll get the access to the product they can uh, configure and they can implement then client can start using the application but we cannot do any customizations when you say customization here functional related customization you cannot change existing functionality or you cannot create some new page to bring some function in, into specific business process but saas allows reports customizations and very basic personalizations and third party integrations this and all can be done in case of saas model when you talk about pass model if any client is looking for the standard applications access and again the flexibility of doing the customizations they have they have to choose pass option 
pass means platform as a service along with the standard application oracle will give the flexibility of the platform where they can develop some custom objects as per their business requirement this is also in the cloud only everything is in the cloud saas in cloud pass in cloud so but in case of saas you cannot do any customizations but pass allows customizations the between saas and pass the big difference is if you are going to use saas model from oracle you cannot do the customizations functional related customizations but tomorrow if oracle is going to come up with the new release with the latest version your environment will be upgraded automatically since you are not doing any customizations but if you are using the pass pass will allow us to do the customizations but if oracle is going to come up with the new release the auto upgrade won't happen so what are the traditional process we follow to upgrade from one version to another version in eps the same practice we have to follow if you are going to opt pass subscription from oracle okay that's a big difference the most of the clients are using the saas subscription only the reason is the auto upgrade okay so if something is not meeting as some business requirement is not meeting with the standard functionality they are just managing with some work around so they are not going with the customizations if they want to do customization they have to go with a pass model so out of 100 clients you can see more than 95 clients are going to use saas so most of the saas clients are small and mid size okay the big big clients only are going with the pass when you say big clients definitely their process is totally they have to manage with the certain customization the standard product and the process what oracle is delivering that may not be good enough as per their business process so definitely we have to do the customizations for the big clients that is the reason the big clients who are using this fusion cloud applications they are going with the pass and most of the clients are using the saas only so more than 95% of clients are saas clients only that means small and mid size still few clients are using pass for very big clients okay so this is how it's uh, different to understand i have one more slide after going slide if you have any questions we will discuss the same saas for only consumption you can consume you can subscribe what are the applications you require from oracle and you can start processing you can configure you can implement as per your business requirement and they can you can start using and we we won't be having any control to modify it could be application or operating system or server related infrastructure or anything we cannot change here but when you talk about pass it supports building some new functionality that means we'll get a control to applications you can develop new functionality or else all together you can develop custom applications and oracle is giving the flexibility they are providing the platform where you can go and build they'll give the access to that area you can go and develop and you can deploy into the same server okay and to develop any functionality we use adf okay we use adf uh, pages for any functionality completely web page okay and when you talk about ias it's only hosting service there is no application you may take the server okay hosting service and you can install whatever the operating system you want to install and you can install the applications or you may not install the applications you may place some data files within that space that's how you can use it okay so this is how we have any questions on this please yeah lakshman on the saas model for fusion is there any level of customizations they allow like personalization or something or completely Uh, zero percent customizations allowed for saas when you say customizations page related customizations you cannot do you cannot create new page new functionality but when i talk about personalizations yes the basic personalizations you can do where you can hide the tab hide the field and you can make mandatory optional field as a mandatory this they are the very basic personalization yes those you can do and you can do the third part integrations and you can do applic uh, reports customizations okay reports customization doesn't impact the process or functionality right so that is the reason oracle is allowing to some report customizations so but only the one is you cannot do any 
functional related customization that means you cannot build any new adf pages okay this is what we have to understand the great advantage of this app is auto upgrade you don't need to do your own practice of upgrading like where you will be just having theme and uh, you will run the pre upgrade reports and you will do everything and you will test then post upgrade etc you don't need to do it it's a simple process you have to write a uh, email to oracle saying that you want to upgrade to the latest latest version if you inform today hardly they will take couple of i mean uh, you can say like if today end of the day if you inform by tomorrow morning your environment you could see as a upgraded to latest version okay they'll take care of the oracle uh, dba team will take care of we no need to have team in case of cloud applications usage so that's how they do so for past standard we can customize it uh, is it uh, the same vision application in the past model past model yes you can do the any page customizations area of pages you can develop okay anyway the integrations that you can do in any saas or pass okay the additional flexibilities you can build new functionality in fusion ebs uh, pass same as ebs in ebs if you have on premise you can play with that you can create new forms you can integrate in the process or else you can create new application this and all you can do the same you can do in case of pass not in saas Lakshman, what's the difference between, uh, I mean, when I say difference in terms of the control the customer has uh, between PaaS and IaaS? I mean, different the difference between SaaS and PaaS, what, what, what's the point you mentioned, customer? Yeah, if let's say I'm a subscribing customer. Okay. How would you explain the difference between PaaS and infrastructure as a service in terms of how much flexibility of uh, say i have one, one, point, one point here what is your requirement your requirement is applications right yeah see you want to take some application subscription from oracle or you want to take the just the space if you want to take the space only space you can take the as infrastructure as service then you can you may just take the oracle applications license and you may install or else you may take some third party applications license and you may install you can use this ias for any purpose but when okay. it comes to applications these two only we have to focus but these are the three options which should be available from any cloud vendor that's the reason we are trying to understand these three terms otherwise this is not at all required okay so if i to be right if i'm subscribed to iaas as a customer hmm. And if I still want to use Oracle application, then my option is almost the equivalent of installing an on-prem. Exactly, exactly. Instead of buying your own server, you are taking the server service in cloud and cloud, cloud service. So, so I I could still say that I'm running Oracle Fusion, but I should not say I'm on the cloud. You I'm not. I'm. I'm not. Cloud only. You can say because this IaaS, whatever you get, this is cloud service only. It's cloud computing. Yeah, cloud it's computing. Not, it's not Oracle cloud application. No, it's a cloud application only because the application where you are deploying, on-premise, or cloud service, cloud uh, uh, kind of uh, hosting service. simple uh, so see if you take from oracle only you can use oracle applications only right in two cases these two cases if you subscribe from oracle the saas or pass you will get oracle application but here you are taking the cloud subscription only cloud subscription as i ask okay this is right. actual server this is a virtual server oracle will maintain within that what operating system you want to install which applications to install that is up to us this is also cloud only right right no i am following you so far all i'm trying to get clarity on is hmm. for the applications i could decide to install oracle oracle fusion applications right 
yes you can design you can install variety of fusion applications see you take in the fusion applications license in marathi okay right that application you are going to install in your on premise then exactly variety of fusion applications the same so, so tomorrow applications if you are going to install in the ias server right so tomorrow if oracle releases release 14 for their saas applications i might as well say i don't want to upgrade to release 14 i want to stay on release 13 no that that see that's your own decision only because now this is separate hosting you are taking right but if i'm subscribed to saas or pass i do not have that choice i have to go to release 14 for certain period they will allow because okay if you see if today it's release 13 still you want to continue with 11 Then whenever you get some issues or bugs, they say these all are fixed in the call. Better you can move to that. That's how they'll definitely force you. That's how you could say. Do you know if you're subscribed to the SaaS, is it still considered a public cloud or a private cloud? That you can uh, decide. The two options we have. You see that the next slide talks about it. Thank you. Yeah. So whether you want to go with the public cloud option or private cloud option, or how you require that you can choose, we have two options also. Yeah. Hybrid also we have public, we have private, we have. Yeah. Lakshman, any upgrade patches or any data fixes? That's uh, we need to go through Oracle as to do that. Or Oracle only. Okay, we'll keep in touch with the global support and uh, based on the discussion and analysis, if you identify or if they suggest, so and so patch need to be applied. then the oracle dba team will come into the picture what are the our dba in case of ebs on premise what are the task is done by dba including the print installation everything mm -hmm. that will be done by dba oracle dba team okay so basically the customer dbas are not allowed to do all this no dbas you can have in uh, cloud in case of cloud from customer side okay yeah yeah thank you yeah thanks Yeah. Hey, Lakshman, one question. So, if I'm subscribed to the Pass model, okay. and let's say if I'm a technical consultant, would I still have, you know, the equivalent of Toad access to the database, or no? Toad access. I mean, the equivalent, whatever it is in the cloud world. Oh uh, no. Would I? Have? If it in no? cloud, it could be Pass or Pass. You cannot connect any third-party tools with the database, and uh, they are giving some. Uh, I mean, uh, BI panel page where you can go and write the queries. Within the application, they are giving the space to write any queries and all. But uh, external tools you cannot connect with a cloud database. That option we don't have. It could be anything, SaaS or PaaS or anything. Yeah, that option we don't have. But how to write the SQL queries within the application? That will I'll be covering in the classes. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. So any other questions here, please? Fine. Hope this is clear to everyone. So most of the clients are using SaaS only. Most of the clients, you can say. So the next point is the public cloud, private cloud, and the hybrid. <clears throat> so offsite infrastructure with third-party management. Okay, public cloud in the sense. so off site infrastructure as a client we are not going to maintain any infrastructure the third party management everything will be managed by oracle so private means on first on on site infrastructure will have our own infrastructure with, with our own uh, team or in other words you can say other option is off site private infrastructure okay will depend on other uh, infrastructure and third party management there are two different options we have so we may maintain our uh, own infrastructure or we may just depend on other infrastructure or, i mean uh, in the different location say you may ask oracle please maintain this infrastructure for us okay please maintain this infrastructure and we'll use this application you please take care of this maintaining this infrastructure and all this this is how we can ask that is possible okay that oracle will be just uh, that is a dedicated service where oracle or some cloud vendor will manage so here public cloud means now normally whatever we are using the 
the most of the clients whatever they are using that is a public cloud only they are not going to maintain any infrastructure with them and uh, some other vendor they will maintain like oracle and the management also will be done by oracle only that is a public cloud and based on our request so even oracle can help us if you say like this is my infrastructure i don't want to share the others infrastructure which you are using for multiple clients we maintain please maintain some dedicated infrastructure for us and maintain the applications and the server maintenance everything and that request they can maintain some private infrastructure for us that's how we can maintain and based on your requirement some part of applications you want to run on the public and a few private in that case also we can use a hybrid option okay so it's a combination of private and public where on on site infrastructure some applications where which will be maintained by someone else you can maintain some on uh, offshore let me say like in other words you can maintain off site infrastructure means somebody will maintain the infrastructure within that you may have few applications and you can have a on site infrastructure within that you can have few applications all applications will be running few on on site infrastructure and a few on off offshore or off site infrastructure this is how like a few very secure application what you treat you may go with the on site few other applications you may go with off site this is all about the the client how they want to go with but these are the different options we have from the oracle you can the, now you can see in the market whatever clients are using public only because oracle taking care of the, uh, the security concerns and everything so that's how we have so <clears throat> public private and hybrid hybrid is combination of public and private but public in the sense everything will be managed by someone else now in our case oracle private in the sense so so we can have infrastructure in our location and we may ask some third party to manage or else it could be the case there is a private infrastructure i mean uh, off site for private infrastructure you can ask oracle to when you give it to oracle it's off site only but that is a private infrastructure not for public it's uh, dedicated for us and uh, that would be managed by oracle only. these are the different options we have any questions here please okay the most of the clients are opting public only very few clients who are going with private very few a quick question on, on that uh, statement so if clients are subscribed and are hosted within a public cloud okay going back to what you said five minutes ago right so if if release 14 is getting ready to be rolled out and i'm on 13 and for whatever reason i'm not ready i i should not have an option right i mean you know because i'm part of the public cloud oracle is rolling out release 14 so everybody who's on the public cloud should get and should be on release 14. so see <clears throat> even in private cloud also that will happen it's not like because you are in the public cloud and uh, they don't put any conditions and all it could be anything no, 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 no. I, I, I understand i understand how they can you know manage it if, if the customer is on a private cloud hmm. but if the customer is on a public cloud then those customers would not have a choice to to delay the upgrade to the next release uh, no because they, they'll give the flexibility see we have one case where uh, oracle came up with the latest release and uh, one of our client was uh, i mean after coming new release also the client was on the older version for one year till the time they allowed later uh, they just uh, we had a call and uh, they just said like uh, going forward if you have any issues it would be difficult for us to help you on that because we fixed many bugs and etc etc many things got changed now we have to move to the latest version that's how they given the instructions and we follow they'll allow for certain period the depend it totally depends the impact so it's going to impact a lot if you are not going to move to the latest version definitely they'll uh, instruct us to move or else they'll allow to continue for certain period since you are in the SaaS uh, SaaS model and public uh, there won't be an issue to move it's a simple job for oracle and again we will get some additional benefits we don't lose anything no challenges we don't need to put any effort uh, to because of this upgrade. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me uh, suggest so to follow up on that question. So in that case, uh, if it is on the public cloud, it will be a separate instance given to you, no, so no. that the. No, as we discussed, as you discussed, it's not a separate instance. Instance would be separate for uh, just it's all about server is one, and as we discussed, they can generate multiple uh, virtual missions, right? So these are different different instances. Okay, these are different, okay, different so instances only. Instance in a virtual uh, server so that uh, exactly. even the upgrade for for some time you can do that. Correct, correct, correct. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Any other questions? Okay, so these are the different options. You may go with the public or private, or else you want to go with a few applications, public, few applications, private, yes, that you can opt for. Hybrid. And uh, these are the few differences when you compare on premise with the cloud, almost we gone through. So when you talk about on premise, which we see for EBS clients, almost all are running their servers on as on premise. So for the on premise, always upfront capex investment okay capex they have to invest uh, for capital of i um, mean uh, capital expenditure they have to incur for that to buy the server infrastructure and everything and customer owned upgrades and patching in case of on premise so the customer has to go with this upgrade so it's a kind of a small size of project it may take two months three months more than that depending on the uh, customer size so, but in case of cloud, that will be done by Oracle. It's uh, here you could see no upgrades, but latest functionality via regular releases. Whenever Oracle will come up with a new release, they'll upgrade automatically. But in case of on-premise, it's a customer-owned upgrades where customer team sh should work on it to do that activity. So you can, uh, another thing is data centers. Okay, data centers and hardware cost includes disaster recovery, etc. Here you have to depend on some data centers. In case of cloud, Oracle will take care of everything. The cost customizations and the maintenance and all it will be a difficult job. In case of cloud, if you are going with a pass model, even the customizations of deploying maintenance will become pretty easy through that uh, the option whatever Oracle is going to provide. And uh, annual support cost and uh, these are the different options you can see how they uh, managing the own network and security access but in case of here so everything will be taken care by oracle only that's how it's always you can see as uh, it's a uh, customer friendly okay so these are the simple differences to understand here you can just see the standard security and access from anywhere and uh, whenever you require you can access the security and everything network everything oracle will take care and the dba team everything they'll maintain we don't need to have any team from our end and i listed very few new points which you have to understand you know dealing with the fusion applications the first point is roles when you talk about roles so in ebs so everything whatever you want to access as a user you need access to responsibility and in the fusion, there is no responsibility concept. We have a concept called as roles. We'll be provisioning the access to users to particular roles based on the role user can have access to certain application functionality. We'll discuss more detail level. We'll have a sessions on this detail level based on the sequence of classes which we are going to have. And the reporting. When you talk about reporting in uh, fusion, we have inbuilt reporting called as HFR high period financial reporting if you have a ebs client if they need high period reporting they have to take the separate license and uh, through hfr you have to do that integration the mapping dimensions creation etc you have to work on it but in the fusion so hfr is inbuilt in the gl fusion gl in ebs we have fsa so they replaced with hfr but we call it as frs in fusion applications Okay, the HFR product, the HFR tool, reporting tool, high period financial reporting tool in Fusion GL, they are giving as a inbuilt future, which we call as FRS, Financial Reporting Studio. Okay, so you can prepare all the reports for based on the GL data 
by using FRS, which is Hyperion Financial Reporting Tool. And in all the applications, we have inbuilt uh, reporting called as BA, Business Intelligence Reporting, as well as OTBA, Oracle Transaction Business Intelligence. So these are the uh, new things you can see with respect to reporting, HFR, OTBA, Oracle Transactional Business Intelligence, and BA reporting. And FBDA finance, uh, uh, it, it's like uh, uh, file based data import. Now all the data conversion, so what we do, we do by using this FBDA templates only. F stands for file, B stands for based. Okay, so uh, D stands for data integrations. Okay, file based data integrations as the import, file based data import. The templates we can use. All Oracle is providing. You can download those templates and you can use for the data conversions. Same as EBS, you no need to prepare the templates to collect the master transactional data from the business. So templates Oracle is providing. We can download. We'll, we'll see when you go through the class. We can understand. But the simple point here is, in case of EBS, the data conversion is completely the technical job. Even functional, being a functional consultant, we involve. But in Fusion, everything can be done by functional people. By using the FBDA templates, the accounting yes, uh, same as we have SLA and all same as EBS, but there are few points which you have to understand. When I talk about SCM side, we will be testing the P2P cycle. At that time, what accounting related some configurations we have to do that we'll discuss. There are few points which you have to understand. And BPM BPM stands for Business Process Management. In EBS for approvals, we have AAB Approval Management Engine. So AME is no more, they just replaced that with BPM, Business Process Management. It could be your general approvals or invoice approvals, requisition approvals or purchase order, any approvals you configure, you want to set a rule in the Fusion applications, we use BPM only. And security console, if you want to create the users or if you want to create the responsibilities and if you want to create the, if you want to assign the responsibility to users in EBS, we use system administrator responsibility. So equivalent to that, we have a security console. So security console only, you can create the users, you can uh, create the custom roles and you can assign those roles to the users and you can manage the users, everything. Some sort of administration task can be managed with the help of security console. This you may compare with EBS as a sysadmin responsibility. And Fusion Arc Structure, we know EBS Arc Structure, Applications and Database, in Fusion they introduced middleware also, what, what the reason and what are the components we have as a part of middleware and how those are connected and why they introduce all these points we'll discuss as a part of Fusion Arc Structure. Just I mentioned this here to address the Arc Structure also they changed in the Fusion Applications compared to EBS. Those, anyway, we'll have a session on those, we'll discuss more detail level. FSM. FSM stands for Functional Setup Manager. Okay, Functional Setup Manager. To do all the functional configurations, this is a place where we can do all the setups. In case of EPS, if you want to do AP setups, you have to access AP responsibility. So you can do AP sets for AR responsibility, AR setups, you will be switching to AR responsibility. That's how with the help of responsibility only you can do any setups in case of EBS, but in the fusion. We have a centralized place called as FSM, Functional Setup Manager. Any application related configuration you can do from FSM. Since we don't have any responsibility concept here, everything you can do from one place. And implementation project. Okay. And before we start with the setups, ideally we create implementation project to manage all our setups. When you say implementation project, you don't compare with the project lifecycle management or project execution management and all. No. It's completely to manage the setups what you are going to do within the application. Okay, there are certain advantages if you create the implementation project. Without creating the implementation project, also you can do the setups. But if you create, there are some benefits. Those will discuss and do it. Okay, but it's recommended ideally we create implementation project before we start with the setups. And within the fusion applications, we have an inbuilt social networking. So say you are working for payables. And you can create with other payables user who are going, who are working in the payables department with other users. You can create the group, however you create in the Facebook and other social networking, and uh, you can communicate with them and you can share any date, uh, any information. Okay, that's how you can collaborate and work uh, within the application. 
it's a inbuilt uh, social networking plugin or at least providing okay so it's inbuilt when you are working you can just if you are going to close the periods you can communicate with uh, your team okay if you are if you have some issue with the supplier yes you can post that information with other team members when you when you contact that supplier this is the point you have to notice etc this is how you can make that collaboration very easy that too within the fusion application environment itself with your work co-workers okay and the dashboards so right is providing the dashboards so that you can avoid searching the data and uh, finding and where and what you have to take action so once you see those within the application you can find the benefit of those dashboards are RA stands for rapid implementation. It's some sort of spreadsheets. Instead of doing the setups within the application, you can provide the data within this RI sheets, rapid implementation sheets. Say you want to create the primer ledger, you want to create the accounting calendar, you want to create the chart of accounts, you want to create the legal entity, you want to create the operating nets. These are all instead of creating through manual process. You can automate this. The data you can with what name system has to create the primary ledger, with what name system has to create the uh, legal entity. Okay, what segments you provide within your chart of accounts. Everything you can provide in the spreadsheet. The sheet you can submit to the instance. Automatically, system will set up all those data and it would create the configuration. However, you decide. Those are very much validated and formatted sheets available. We'll, we'll see. Just a simple point is, RA stands for Rapid Implementation. With the help of rapid implementation, you can do the setups with the help of spreadsheets. Within the spreadsheet, you can provide the data. That spreadsheet you can submit to the application. Automatically, setups would be ready within the instance. And users, users are classified in the Fusion applications as implementation user and employee users. What is the difference? How we can create? Which user we can create when? Okay, these points we'll discuss. And enterprise structure, we know in EBS we have a multi-org structure. So similar to multi arm structure in Fusion, we have enterprise structure. How it is similar or different, we'll discuss once we get into the actual classes. And the other point is here we have a course curriculum which we are going to cover. So primarily these are the five applications we are going to focus with the full scope. General Fusion General Ledger, Accounts Payables, Receivables, Cash Management, Fixed Assets. Along with that, we'll be going through the basic configuration process flow with the fusion expense. EBS I expense in fusion we are calling as fusion expense. EBT EBS tax. Okay, whatever you have in the fusion EBS that in fusion we are calling as fusion tax. Fusion tax is nothing but EBS EBT. The solution they given as this do any changes to fusion tax. However, you see EBT and EBS the same you can see in the fusion applications. EBS I expense is fusion expense here. Apart from that, we'll cover this the basic configuration pro uh, processes for P2P and O2C. If you want to work on P2P O2C, we have to complete the basic inventory purchasing order management setups. And other just these are the other points we we'll go through. And the complete uh, training, whatever we are going to have, we'll go with the uh, fresh instance based training only. I mean, like I'm not going to use any sample data. Okay, so everything will create from the scratch. That's how we'll understand what setups we have to do, how that specific functionality need to be related, additional setups we have to do, how to execute process. Everything will go with that approach. Okay, fresh environment and latest version based training. That's what, uh, as we discussed already. The each and every session what we are going to have will record and it will be sharing through Google Drive and we'll provide the instance access. You can practice by default we'll provide for three months. If at all you require we can extend for a few more months. And uh, whatever we are going to discuss we'll compare with the EBS wherever it is applicable. Okay, we'll compare. If you are going to create user, we'll compare with EBS. How we create user and EBS, how we create here. If you are going to create the accounting calendar, how we create accounting calendar fusion, how it is different from EBS. And if you are going to create the chart of accounts, what the difference? Okay, what are some minute changes they did or some big changes they did, whatever, whatever applicable, what we should understand by compare with EBS, we'll compare and we'll discuss. Okay. So this is a detailed uh, kind of curriculum. These are the basic setups in uh, GL and the different concepts which you are going to 
handle in the GL and the tables based configurations which you are going to do. These are the different concepts which you are going to handle in the conversions, okay, and the custom roles, etc. So these are all our AR concepts, the same with cash management. We will be covering few more also, I didn't include in this. And fixed assets configurations and the concepts, fusion expense, basic configuration process for fusion tax, R2R R flow configuration and the tax calculations, P2P configuration. Okay. And the uh, requisition creation approvals, PO creation approvals, receipt creation, performing delivery, checking on and quantity, invoice creation through matching with the two or three way. And uh, the payment area will be covering in the payables. Other side, go to see where we have to complete order management configuration or other areas configuration. And we'll see the process of creating the sales order, validating, booking, pick relationship confirmation, finally, in auto invoice creation in the receivables application and FSM function setup manager what we are going to do so that's what uh, we are going to cover so any questions for anyone please I got two questions uh, the first one I do understand that this training is for uh, fusion ERP or, or Oracle cloud ERP uh, whichever you call it so from the from the uh, from the document that you're sharing with us right now which of these modules are considered technically ERP as per Oracle's classification right now no it is all our functional modules only okay these are all our functional modules so there is no technical module so technically is a you know like that's a separate task which can be done for any module so you want to do a technical job by, by, by technically what I meant is if I if I were to go to Oracle and say, hey, can I subscribe to your ERP product? Which modules is considered to be part of? Uh, well, the, like, the this procurement is uh, procurement part of ERP management? Procurement, uh, yeah. We, those all we call as basically offerings. Product classifications we call as offering. So these all are finance. Okay. It all falls under financials. Along with that, uh, we are going to cover the P2P and O2C cycles where the P2P and O2C along with the finance it falls under SCM. Primarily, we are going to focus on financials models. Because they also have something called a cloud procurement, right? Yeah, procurement we have. That is separate offering. Procurement uh, consists of modules like purchasing application is primary with the procurement. You have another application called as procurement contracts and you have a supplier portal which is equal to i supplier in eps okay okay and supplier qualifications we have within that so there, there are set of applications like however we have uh, multiple applications of finance so let's say finance gen general ledger accounts payables receivables cash money fixed assets as the primary core modules in the same way procurement those are the separate applications again when you say SCM in SCM like it's a inventory purchasing order management those are three core modules as a part of SCM so so even even as a product if they are part of two different cloud offerings my question is are they all integrated or do we have to all are integrated whatever the products we have in uh, fusion applications it can be finance okay. or procurement or SCM or SCM or PPM, Project Portfolio Management, which is equal to Project Suit in EBS. These all are integrated as how they need to be connected. If there is any need of integration between those two applications, yes, they already did it. You don't need to do again because those are from the different legacies, not required. All okay. And then my next question is, I also saw something called Oracle Cloud EPM. What does that stand for and how does that what? fall into the big picture of everything else we're talking about when you said ppm no epm enterprise performance management epm enterprise performance. this is see we have uh, like it's uh, all reporting and all we have those all uh, under ep within that we have a planning budgeting and there are many other uh, options we have basically that product family we call as offering and within that what are the modules or options we the solutions we have those we call as options I'll, I'll show you all that offerings whatever oracle is delivering in, in within the instance only i'll show you 
you have a session on that you can you can see in uh, in one go like all these finance procurement scm and all the offerings whatever varak is delivering in one screen you can see that's how they given that uh, page yep is hyperion still an option on the cloud sorry hyperion hyperion yes we have hyperion planning and budgeting we have okay that that we have uh, as a part of a separate option which you can uh, subscribe separately apart from our core financials you need separate subscription for high period planning and budgeting but when you okay. use financials that hfr will come along with the high period financials as a part of general ledger hfr you don't need separate subscription it is along with the finance only you can get but when you talk about planning and budgeting yes you need separate subscription for that thank you yeah, any other questions fine so if no questions we can wind up for today we'll connect tomorrow same time okay so any questions from anyone please okay thank thanks for your time Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Hello. 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 Yeah, I have already subscribed uh, this course. Okay. So, are you going to instance access? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You can just keep in touch with the uh, team members. I think you might be in touch with someone, right? So, ask them to get okay. instance details. I'll be sure. Yeah, got it. Uh, email and I'll I'll do that. Sure. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions from anyone? Hi, Lakshman. Yeah. Hi. uh do we get security concern for practice purpose uh, some because some institutions and some institutes are not providing security concern for practice that's why i was asking you do we get access because see if you are okay. not getting access to security console is a scope of uh, doing the configuration and doing everything right yeah for few institutions are not providing security console that's why i was asking you so when you are working for your client what sort of access do you get at the time of implementation the same access will get from instance whatever we are going to provide if you don't get security access you cannot create user you cannot assign rules nothing you can do it's just can we like another doubt but can we able to do so as many implementations as we as yeah, we have you to can do for implementation projects you can create you can no restriction we are keeping okay you will have flexibility you can get uh, security console access and you can create n number of implementation projects no but how good instances how good your instance is providing from you from your side is okay. there any interruptions can you come again come see uh, uh, something what i would like to ask you is uh, how good instance is uh, providing from your side uh, is there any problems uh, any instance doubt in uh, some instance no no no, no. we provide validated instance okay you won't be finding any issues first we'll validate okay if everything is fine that instance only will provide once you start accessing you don't find any issues sometimes in between if any issue will switch to other instance but uh, generally that won't happen okay you'll get validated instance only for finance yeah so lakshman uh, uh, like like uh, we are taking the finance course Uh, do we have access for supply chain system access too, or just only for the finance? Yes, we'll do uh, SCM also. We, you will be able to do any setups or anything with SCM, HCM also. Yeah, because actually, you know, finance and supply chain both are like interlinked, right? Yeah. See, yes, we'll give the access even in our classes also. We are going to test P2P and O2C cycles, right? So the same you have to practice from your. Yes, we'll get instance which allows you to do. SCM related configuration, if required, core procurement or even HCM or anything else. We'll we'll give that kind of instance. Uh, 
so another question is that we have i haven't subscribed the, the course yet uh, so tomorrow onward if i want to take uh, the the classes i have to subscribe that you can talk to check with the team okay got it yes so any other questions from anyone fine if no questions we can wind up for today we'll connect tomorrow same time and we'll continue from here thank you all have a good and good night